Today we're talking about British Prime Minister and Gary Busey's stunt double Boris Johnson. That's right, the Brexit drama continues as Britain continues to prove they really suck at leaving. Just ask India, America, or any other country that celebrates an Independence Day. The current problem that has people scratching their heads is Boris Johnson's temporary suspension of Parliament until the Queen gives a speech. Yeah, their government is odd. What? A monarch getting in the way of a democracy? Who could have seen that one coming? The first question I find myself asking is, why? Well, it's because come Halloween of this year, Brexit is scheduled to happen, with or without a deal. Yeah, one of the negotiators was definitely having some fun with the dates on that one. Ooh, spooky. Now this brings us to the real question of the episode that I'm interested in. What, if anything, can Parliament do to force the Prime Minister's hand? I mean, this is essentially a conflict between the executive branch and the legislative branch. With this suspension move, it seems like the Prime Minister is admitting that there's something Parliament could do. There are two main ways for MPs to stop a no-deal Brexit. The first, to use the Fixed-Term Parliament Act to bring down the government via a vote of no confidence and force an election. If they get a majority of MPs to say they don't have confidence, then they have 14 days to find an alternative that does have one, which could include a cross-party national unity government. Now, I realise that, whoo, boy, did that all sound very complicated. And us, as red-blooded Americans, won a war so that we wouldn't have to care about parliamentary procedures anymore. But let me break it down for you. This strategy, the most probable option at this point, would essentially be Parliament saying, Here's a bill that says the leadership is terrible. If it passes, then the designated leaders are out. Of course, the devil's in the details with this one. In Britain, as with most non-American democracies, politics is even more like a reality TV show. I know, it's hard to believe that there could be more drama out there. In these systems, you vote for your party to have seats in Parliament, and the party with more than half of the seats in Parliament gets to have their leader be Prime Minister. Now that might sound like pretty unremarkable reality TV. Until you realize that there are a ton of parties in politics, so barely ever does anyone actually get a majority. Currently, there is no out and out majority in British politics. This means that different parties have to come together to form a negotiating bloc and nominate a prime minister to represent them. For this vote of no confidence to work, it would require that some people from Boris's own coalition vote him off the island. Oh, you bet there's betrayal in this story. So I, I, I absolutely believe that we need those members from this Conservative Party. We can't, have, we can't win a no confidence vote without those Conservative members doing the right thing. And I think people have got to put their country before party and vote for it. We will table that motion as soon as we can, but we need people to vote for it. The plan would be to vote Boris Johnson off the island and replace him with a leader who won't allow a no deal Brexit. Now I know the question you're probably asking, what the heck does any of this have to do with Mr. Johnson announcing a long suspension of Parliament from September 11th to October 14th, when the Queen's speech will start a new session? Well, we first need to get a little background on how to replace a leader, because you don't just cut the head off the chicken and then tell the body, hey, figure it out. Now there are two ways this could play out. First. But if he loses, a 14-day countdown would begin. At the end of those 14 days, the Commons will vote again. During this time, Boris would be forced to form a new government, with the hopes of winning back the confidence of the Commons for the second vote. After this vote happens, Boris Johnson will have 14 days to win over ex-coalition members and regain Parliament's confidence. On the other hand, during those same 14 days, Britain's Liberal Party will be trying to get Conservative defectors to not only declare, eh, we're not with Boris Johnson anymore, but on top of that also say, we want to switch parties and declare, yeah, the Liberal leader, Jeremy Corbyn, he should really be the one in charge. Now, if that were to happen, the Liberals could claim that they have a majority coalition and make Corbyn the Prime Minister without triggering a new election. As you can imagine though, that's a bit of a hard sell, but it's what they're counting on to get a deal on a no deal. 
Corbyn's pitch is that he would call a snap general election to form a new government and stop a no-deal Brexit from taking place. Essentially, say you'll vote for me, I'll come in and defuse the bomb and then immediately trigger a snap election. Now that might still sound incredibly far-fetched, but liberals do have two things that they're leveraging. First, a majority of MPs want to stop a no-deal Brexit, so you don't have to put too much effort into the actual pitch meeting. And second, Mr. Johnson has a commons majority of just one. So you only need to get one guy to change his allegiance. Not the hardest thing in the world, although it would be a complete 180 value shift. So that's what happens if, at the end of 14 days, someone has a prime minister that can get half of the votes. You either have a pro no deal Brexit Johnson continuing to be at the helm, or an anti no deal Brexit Corbyn. Now the other scenario is if it turns out that nobody has confidence in anybody anymore. If no new government emerges, a general election would have to be held. Now surprise elections aren't really a thing. Hey, surprise, we're reforming the government next week. I'd brush up on the issues if I were you. So this election would happen after the Brexit deadline, and therefore a no deal Brexit would occur. As a government source was quoted, we have been very clear that if there's no confidence vote, he won't resign. We get to set an election date. We don't want an election, but if we have to set a date, it's going to be after the 31st of October. So the only option with the no deal vote if no confidence route is successfully voting out Johnson and then pivoting over to immediately supporting the opposite party. Again though, what does this have to do with a day after his audacious move to suspend Parliament, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is facing multiple challenges as he tries to limit the time lawmakers have to block a no-deal Brexit. Well, the effect of the decision will be to increase the pressure on Jeremy Corbyn to propose a vote of no confidence next week. Basically, if they don't vote on it next week, then that 14 day period is going to be expiring four days before the no-deal Brexit is triggered. They're cutting it closer than I did with half of my freshman year essays. But they could pull off delaying the Brexit if everything goes perfectly. Let's hope everything does go smoothly and the TA doesn't come back with a whole page of notes. So if this is plan A, I hate to ask, but what's plan B? MPs vote by a majority of just one to force Prime Minister Theresa May to ask for an extension to the Brexit process. Actually passing legislation? Yeah, good luck with that one. So how can the legislature pass a bill that binds the executive branch's arms? Well, this strategy was successfully deployed the last time a Brexit deadline was creeping up under Theresa May. MPs vote by a majority of just one to force Prime Minister Theresa May to ask for an extension to the Brexit process. Now, this amendment was as controversial as it was confusing. It stated that if MPs vote to delay Brexit, the government should seek an extension from the EU and bring forward legislation to change in law, the date of the UK's departure. Now that seems simple enough. The problem emerges when you dig a little deeper, because it would not be binding in the same way as an act of parliament, but would nonetheless be an expression of the will of the house and that would be politically difficult for Miss May to ignore. Difficult to ignore, huh? But believe me, Boris will give it his best shot. So what's actually going on here, because according to most sources, this is a lot more powerful than symbolism. Yeah, guys, I went down a bit of a deep rabbit hole on this one, a trail of dirty coffee mugs in my wake. Finally, I found my answer with the House of Commons library. In hindsight, probably should have started there. What this bill actually did was require the Prime Minister to make this motion to Parliament. It's super convenient, they already wrote the entire motion for you, except for the ellipsis where you put in the new extended date you want Brexit to happen on. Now this triggered a debate on the motion that was totally written by the Prime Minister. For this next excerpt, in British, to table something means to propose it, not to cease debate on it. Yeah, that also contributed to my confusion for quite a long time. In this debate, amendments may be tabled to the motion. 
If selected by the Speaker, an amendment could, amongst other things, propose to change the date in motion. So first, the Prime Minister proposed a motion. Then, pending Speaker approval, you can amend that proposal, change the date. Finally, if the House of Commons approves a motion for the Prime Minister seeking an extension, she would at that point be under legal obligation to ask the European Council for that extension. She would be breaching domestic law if she refused to follow the direction of MPs. And all of that went off without much of a hitch. Although before it happened, May had already pledged to seek an extension until June 30th. So they didn't have to hold her feet to the fire to continue to ask for an extension until June 30th. They approved the date though, so what was already in motion continued to move. Some are now saying, <laughs> Do it again. Much like that video, results may vary upon repetition. Under Theresa May, this bill didn't just pop up. Members of Parliament used the procedural hook of amending the next steps motion required of the previous year's withdrawal act to take control of the parliamentary order paper and get this bill passed. Taking control of Parliament is a key problem in minority coalitions passing things. Because much like Mitch McConnell in the Senate, the majority coalition can just say, yeah, we're not going to vote on that. This time, there's no current legislation to act as a hook for an amendment mandating an extension. Now, this leads to the question, how do we even get this thing up for a vote? Understanding order number 24, MPs can apply for emergency debates on important matters that should have urgent consideration, and the speaker may select notions for debate by MPs. Well, a looming no deal Brexit with a prime minister trying to silence parliament is Probably something worth discussing. Yeah, yeah, let's just do that and then pass this law just like last time. Well, again, not quite so simple. The Speaker of the House would have to go against precedent by allowing MPs to attach a binding vote to an emergency debate. Now that's a fair amount of contingencies to prepare for, but if all those pieces fall together, Parliament might not attempt to completely tear down the government with a vote of no confidence. Right now, Parliament is coming back into session on September 3rd, and soon after that, Parliament will be suspended for almost five weeks. There'll be desperately little time. This is all going to happen very fast, but because you watched this episode, you'll be able to explain to your friends at the cocktail party exactly what the heck is happening in Britain right now. Just remember to cite your source. And yes, based on my analytics, Someone's having a cocktail party. Nobody 13 to 17 though. Man, I should really invest in a fidget spinner. Anyways, that's what's about to happen in Britain. Although critics point out that the only ways to actually solve this problem are still pass a deal, tear off the bandaid and leave without a deal, or cancel Brexit and remain. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching!